under our belt here. Uh, mm -hmm. It starts right now. I'll make everything very plain to you. To begin with, I was born without earlobes, a well-known congenital distinction of Lochamp ancestry, like the Habsburg lip or the hawk nose of the Medici. <laughs> Gold balls. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is Film Sack. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, 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 what do we have here? It's time for Film Sack. Mining the very depths of film entertainment for all mankind. This is episode 647. Joined today by Brian. Oh, I'm Scott Johnson, by the way. Joined today <laughs> by Brian. He has a big red number eight on his inner thigh. I swear it done away. Ooh, look at that. Oh, hi. hi. This week on Film Sack, we're high on a top of Her Majesty's Secret Service for approved vacation when we head to the Swiss Alps of streaming HBO Max Max. For some allergy relief and genealogy talk with lobeless spectra supervillain Blofeld, after we almost quit our day job as double O number spy guys and narrowly avoid accepting a bride by bribe, bride by bribe. How do you say bride bribe? Bride by bride by, bride by yeah, shooting. He, he's going to give me a bribe for a bride to marry a oh. contessa with a death wish. Nice. A bride bribe. <laughs> yeah, bride bribe. Oh. <laughs> marry a contessa with a death wish. Wish granted. Look, it's complicated. It was 1969, dudes. Anywho, they got me locked up in this teeny room all by myself, all revved up after a hot dinner date with international hotties with very specific and ironic regional food allergies. And the only entertainment I have is this centerfold I ripped out of a Playboy magazine earlier that I stepped into my man skirt on the way here and thought of this number written in lipstick on my inner thigh. Now I could construct a device to escape and find number eight or, hello me, it's me again. And nap time. Randy? This never happened to the other fella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nicely done. You guys shouldn't have done bride, bot. Bri I still can't do it. It's bride, hard. Bride, bride, bride. bride, bride. bride. You even bride, have bride in your name. Like it's prominently in your name. Uh, anyway, also with us, we have Randy. They made George Lazen be wear the puffy shirt, Jordan. Aloha, Scott. Brian. Brian. Do try to pay attention, won't you? And please don't touch that. It's a very dangerous device that you've strangely been allowed to store in your desk here at the office. Since when did you have an office? Aren't you a field agent? And why are you always leaving the secretary on red? Can't you see? She wants you so bad. Like, this secretary woman does nothing when you aren't here, except write Mrs. Commander 007 James T. Bond on the disposable book covers we give her, and she doesn't even do that thing where you turn the book cover inside out so you have a completely blank side outside to draw on. It's a monstrous situation. Before you head back out into the field, please read these three rules. Number one, you are not allowed to head back out into the field. <laughs> so, <laughs> just don't. What's your problem? <laughs> Number two, you're not allowed to bomb your personal enemy using a fleet of attack helicopters. Where did you where did you get that? <laughs> what? Number three, before you visited the mountaintop harem. You fell in love with a woman for the first time in your life, and you kind of devoted yourself to her, so you're not allowed to have sex with more than, let's say, three to five of the brainwashed women in the mm -hmm. mountaintop harem before it's like bad up vibes for your fiancé, dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, can uh, brainwashed women fully provide consent? We're, we're not saying no, mm. but only because it's 1969. Give it like 40 more years, and we're going to stop being so rapey. God, you're good looking, though. Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Lazen yeah, Beaky. you know, she didn't go to the uh, the room with the woman with the latex allergy. No. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. All right. Uh, now I'm trying not to think of it as I move over to <laughs> Brian. When he's not getting it on with the chicken lady, he's skiing on one leg down a huge mountain ebbit. <laughs> that chicken lady. I can't. Now I just see the lady from the kids in the hall. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Duh. Uh, so there's a little bit of story to this one. Uh, so Tom Petty's guitarist, a guy named Mike Campbell, wrote this, wrote a demo for the song Boys of Summer. 
Uh, mm. He played it for Tom Petty. Tom said, it's not right for this album. And so uh, Mike <laughs> ended up giving it to Don Henley, who then added lyrics to it and, of course, had a big hit with it. But before he gave it to Don Henley, he actually gave it to Beatles producer George Martin, who was friends with Sean Connery. And uh, Sean Connery heard the song and said, oh, let me write some lyrics to this. And, uh, and he wrote some lyrics that were reminiscing about how he felt in 1969 when On Her Majesty's Secret Service came out. Uh, and so here, my friends, is uh, all all that leads up to this. Here's the song uh, for this week. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. I missed that last thing. What was that? What is that last bit? What that's, is that? The James Bond theme on a didgeridoo. Oh, of course. oh, oh duh. A didgeridoo. I nice. mean, who who would have not known that? That's amazing. You can find anything on the internet. <clears throat> that's a that's crazy. Uh, well done. It was almost a little, um, well, like that song itself, a little melancholy. It's a little, a little know. melancholy and you know, yeah. lyrics are sad. Uh, I originally did. So yesterday I recorded it and I did the Don Henley register, you know, uh, uh, I fought them under sea. I fought them out in space. You know, did it at that level. Yeah. And for the, for the chorus, he does a little bit of a falsetto and I thought I could too. And so I was like, but I can't see him. So basically I had a version. There was a version out there for half a day that has me doing falsetto and doing it in one higher register. Uh, I've deleted that. Oh, and, uh, man. That <laughs> will never exist anywhere. I think actually I do still have that vocal track, but uh, uh, it'll, it should never be heard. I played it for T and I said, oh, yeah, now that I'm hearing it in the car, it sounds a little painful. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's not so good to shoot for the fences. Do you always hear Do you always test stuff in the car just, just yeah. to see? Yeah, because it's a really good sounding board. Because I feel like people will listen to the show in the car more than anything else. So, <laughs> Wow, I love that. I love that. Yesterday, well, yesterday yeah. I spent a bunch of money to get the doors of my car filled with uh, sound dampening. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. What a difference. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. No, that's yeah. good. Copper, this is the copper cube, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go get uh, go get some dynamat put in your car if you're if you like if it's loud or if, like the, sometimes the doors of a car are like drums. You Isn't know, dynamat like, the the sidekick of the Blue Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> dynamat. Yeah, I, I hope so. Well, anyway, ask your parents. <laughs> yeah, ask ask your freak. Oh my gosh, maybe your grandparents at this point. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey it's the movie uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, and boy, did they remind us about five hundred times in the movie that that's what this movie's called because I kept referring to it. Um, <laughs> it's totally fine. This is the George Lazenby run at James Bond and our long run of James Bond movies that we sort of uh, piecemeal out uh, over time and watch. And uh, this is the one we watched, and uh, we're going to get into it after this fake Fletcher reading explaining what this film's about. This is from a listener who remains anonymous. On Her Majesty's Sacred Service takes James Bond on a detour from his usual globe-trotting adventures of martinis and mayhem to explore his softer side. Bond's romantic escapades are interrupted by this perennial thorn in his side, Ernst Blofeld, who just can't seem to let Bond have a moment of peace. As Bond navigates explosive encounters and daring stunts to thwart Blofeld's world domination plans, he also tries his hand at being a romantic hero. Because let's face it, saving the world is easy. Managing a love life alongside it? Now that's a true challenge, even for the suavest spy around. Dude, I'm getting a, like a John Mulaney vibe out of that. <laughs> no oh, yeah. Now that's that you point. say that, yeah. And James Bond is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, totally. Uh, I hope we hear from that person again because those those are very good. Too. They did a great job. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, this is uh, the one the Peter R. Hunt directed uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. They his thought they were starting one, over. Right? Yeah, it was. I think mm. it was his last one. Yeah, other guy uh, from the last two came back for a couple, right? I think I can't remember his name. What's that? So, Sean dir- Connery did come back after this the director. No, the director. Oh, the director. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. Can't Peter remember. Hunt, uh, What's oh, the, other? the guy who did... Um, yeah, the previous yes. one. Because he came back for the next, I think for the next Connery one, which would be Connery's last official canon one, right? Yeah, Lewis Gilbert. Was he the one he did? No, Guy um, Hamilton. Guy Hamilton, Guy is Hamilton. that it? Okay. I don't know. Right. These so he, directors. he directed yeah. Goldfinger, and then he directs the next three that we're going to see, Diamonds gotcha. and mm-hmm. Living Oh, and, three more. And, okay. Oh, oh, that's right, because he did get into, he got, uh, he started cracking into the... Uh, Dipped his toe into the more... Yeah, the more mm-hmm. the more run. Uh, well, anyway, uh, it's one that uh, I've been excited to see because I've never seen this one, not even pieces or parts of it, just like nothing. The only thing I ever knew about it was Diana Rigg was in it, and for my money, she is 
the hottest British lady in the history of the 60s. <laughs> um, but she's yes, also and- really great in Game of Thrones, so we'll talk about that as well. Oh, yes, yeah. please, yeah. please. Tell, tell Cersei I did it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she, she's, uh, she's awesome, and uh, I wasn't let down by her performance at all. In fact, here's what I came away with. I'll just give a quick overall here. I was surprised by this. I went in, and it was kind of cheese ball like these all are at first. Uh, this one's a little slower, less action, that kind of thing. But two things happened. He grew on me as mm-hmm. Bond. He started rough. Uh, the first couple scenes, I was like, oh, shit, this guy really, I don't know if I can mm-hmm. do this. And then it kind of grew on me. He got, I, I got better with him as the choice. Yeah. And she is maybe, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm fresh because I just watched it yesterday. She might be my favorite, at least classic Bond girl. Um, yeah. And the reason I think it is is she's less she's not two dimensional. She tell gives him what for. She stands up for herself. Tells her dad to f off when he needs to. Like she's got well, a and, real spunk to yeah, her that they don't yeah, but, usually give these women in these movies. And she's so really she's really great. And uh, she and he has to court her. Like <clears throat> at the first the first time they meet, it's on the beach, and he rescues her from. Uh, well, from suicide, but also from those guys who were chasing her. And he says, hi, I'm John Bond, James Bond. And she's like, doesn't even respond. Just is like, yeah, whatever. And, uh, and he gets attacked. Yeah. Like, he really has to actually devote some time to to, right. to wooing her over. Yeah. Because she's a whole character. Like, yeah. that's the like the beauty of, of this as a book for me is that she's a whole character. It's like she has, she has like, as the movie's starting, she has mental issues. Right. And like we were concerned about her, her relationship with her father is an actual adult relationship. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's set in the it's, 1960s. So it's got, it's got some problems of its own, sure. but like, it, it, like she's the whole character. And then like, because of that, because you see her fall in love with a man who's you're not supposed to be able to fall in love with. And so like, mm-hmm. he's actually seems to be doing the same because of that later when she's driving a freaking race car like yeah. you're like yeah she's amazing because mm-hmm. she's a whole person yeah she's not yes, only and not only that but she just doesn't seem there's never i never got the impression that we have a damsel in distress here like they usually force on us with these movies or that right. she's somehow weaker and needs him to solve everything or whatever i mean there's it's almost like there's some of that in bond's eyes but she's fine without him. She doesn't need him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she takes out a she takes out a dude by somehow pulling him through a wall with a bunch of circles. Like yeah. a, oh, yeah. a dividing wall somehow knocks him out down the stairs. But, the, but there's a there's a scene at, at the end of the first act of this movie where she's um she's negotiating with her father to tell James Bond what James Bond wants to know. And you really sense that she's ready to walk out of this entire life. Like mm-hmm. it is, this is nothing like what you say when you say bond girl. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Sure. She's a contessa. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah whole, the whole thing. I mean, this is, this is probably, oh, man, it's, it's hard for me to say, cause I just saw it, but this might be my favorite bond film so far because it is, it breaks every convention of James Bond. You've got bond getting married. You know, this perennial bachelor sleeps with anything that moves. He still does it in this movie. Don't get me wrong, but of course. you don't get a mission from M. You get the opposite. You get no mission from M. Mm-hmm. You get no gadgets from Q except for the stuff that bond apparently has been hiding in his drawer. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no cheeky bond girl names, no like, you know, pussy galore and xeniana tops and stuff like that there's not even any opening lyrics to the music the 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 opening theme song they they basically took all the conventions from the first five films and said we're we're going to keep a couple things but for the most part we're getting rid of all this yeah and we're, we're gonna, going to the we're going back to the source which is the books yeah. and we're gonna yes. we're gonna get rid of what the what the we didn't like that they brought to the movies mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and they kept so a few what? things that i do like i i think the theme is uh, i can't believe i'm having this conversation because i really expected this to be shit it's a one-off for one actor it didn't continue yeah. that meant it failed in my mind right i'm not around for this mm-hmm. i'm not even born mm-hmm. when this movie comes out uh, or I'm an infant. I don't even know what year, what time of year uh, was it? 1969 came out. Um, you can think December. So yeah, we were both born uh, we were, when it came out. We were both shit in uh, our pants, is what we were doing. We were both shit in our pants, yeah. right? Like Still now, sore. like now, but just uh, different reasons. Yeah, back <laughs> you, you can thank Lazenby's agent for ruining his potential to be a Bond again because he told Lazenby to not go any further, even though it was like a seven movie contract or something potential. He oh, said, don't really? go any further because times are a change in, and these movies are going to be antiquated and they're not going to, they're not going to translate into the seventies. And so Lazenby went all screw you guys. I'm going home. I'm going wow. out of here. Okay. 
I want to see that yeah. documentary bad. It's good. I hear it. it's great. It. It's good. Yeah, yeah, heard it's really good so things good. about it. What's it called? Lazenby, Lazen Bye Bye or something. Whatever. Right, Laz Lazen Bye Bye. Do no more Bond. <laughs> no more Bond for you. Um, but anyway, called, he's also the becoming Bond. Becoming Bond. Becoming okay, bond. I'll look it up. Uh, he so he's the youngest too. By the way, twenty nine doing this. He does not look twenty nine. He looks you know forty something. I don't know how they do this yeah. back then, but whatever. He was twenty nine <laughs> years old. Everybody who's ever been Bond is older than that. Craig was thirty eight. Uh, freaking, I forgot. Even even Sean Connery and Doctor No was thirty one. Yeah, so they were, you know, he's, barely, he, barely. Yeah, that's true. But as as a brand new Bond, nice and young, probably had a, you know, they could have could have had a ten picture deal with this guy, yeah. um, and he grew on me. I didn't like him at first. I thought he was weird looking, and part of that was just me used to seeing Connery, and then you hear the music yeah. all burn it, burn it. And I'd go, all right, let's go, and they'd come out of the helicopter, and I'd go, oh shit, that's not Connery. Okay, and I had to get used to it. Yeah, I mean, it even sounds like Connery the very first time you hear him when he comes out and says, "I'm Bond, James Bond." It's like, oh, yeah. are you? Wow, I mean, I know, I know, you got to hide the Australian accent, but you really are sounding like Connery. And then he, it does, it doesn't stick. Fortunately, he kind of just comes into his own with it's, his uh, with his voice. But well, they really spend the in middle third of the movie having him do a different voice. Having well, the yeah, character <laughs> produce a completely different voice and like yes. Stewie it, from uh, from Family yeah. Guy, basically. Yeah. And like, if you don't, if you don't <laughs> accept that, like, if your brain can't just flow with it, man, you're in for a bad time. This is not, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, for me, this is my favorite of the of the Bond movies so far. Like, this is like, yeah, none of the previous five are as good as this one for a lot of reasons. But that voice he does. It's sus. It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's one enough of the to most... fool. It's enough to fool twelve uh, uh, angels of death, apparently, yeah. uh, including, by the way, um, Joanna Lumley from uh, Absolutely Fabulous is one of them. Oh, oh that's who that is. Yeah, the well, not blonde, the ch uh, not the chicken one, but the other one. Not uh, the chicken one, but the English the English one. Yeah, uh, they just show her a couple times. Like I, don't, I can't remember if she's the one who's eating fish sticks and tater tots. It's, it's, <laughs> it's easy <laughs> because it's actually easy to do, identify them because of the racial stereotyping. Right. They're all international hotties, yeah. Yeah. and they're all allergic to their respective locations right. known for food yeah. so, well, so i'd argue i'd twice. argue that that ruby the english girl who looks like uh i told or i said this in our chat but she's basically right. one of the meg ryan characters from joe versus the, <laughs> versus the volcano ruby, yeah. she's yeah. super she's super meg ryan -y. yeah ruby um i would argue that chicken is not you know you she, don't that think was her that was the family farm, right? That's what she. Well, grew yes, up but with. it's not. Yeah. But it's not. You don't think, oh, chicken is totally an English food. You don't think fried chicken is so so totally English. <laughs> well, and I would also, say having her allergic to fish and chips would have been better. Right. She's, also, allergic she's to also the trumpets or something. She's also the only double. She's the only one who has a, a regular name. Like uh, she's because of, like the right. other one, the other English girl is just called the English girl. Yes. And then yeah. The rest of them are the German girl and the Jamaican girl and so Well, on. the Hungarian, the other one that he sleeps with uh, is Hungarian. Her name is. Nancy. Oh, and boy, they were which is all not a Hungarian Hungary. name at all. No, by the way. <laughs> no. I was gonna say that's Unless the least Nancy. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I have no Hungarian heritage, but that doesn't sound Hungarian to me at all. Yeah, no. We will name you Nancy. I, <laughs> I love, I love the uh, so uh, Angela Scowlar plays Ruby, and mm -hmm. she's just fantastic in this. She like is, she has, yeah. she so has such a it's such a choice role for a person. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things she has to do is write inside his thigh with lipstick and i was just thinking like what if uh she was in room six or nine like oh my right. gosh it's it's right <laughs> she had to draw do? the little line underneath the bottom there of the you go. smart <laughs> like <laughs> smart. <laughs> that's pretty good yeah there's uh there's a lot to be said in the positive about lots of choices and i guess i just didn't ex i don't know what i expected i came in going this is going to be the worst one we've seen i really thought that Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't know why I didn't. No one had told me it was bad or anything. I had a few of our listeners are piping in all over the place, going, "Oh, it's the best one. Lazenby's the best Bond. You, yeah. you just, remember, you know." The only thing, like I'd seen this one time before, uh, just by going through all the all the films, had the DVD box set, still do somewhere, and uh, and said, "All right, it's time for me to watch Honor Manchie's Secret Service." And I remember falling asleep, and I decided, "Well, I get. I don't think I'm going to go back to this one." Yeah. So. Yeah. This is Must really the first good. full time I've watched. If, <laughs> this if you film. if you watch this movie and you don't watch the last ten minutes, 
it's mm -hmm. a totally different thing. The yeah. last 10 minutes is a yeah. pinnacle of storytelling in the it James really Bond is. cinematic universe. It's so important right. to who he becomes kind of after this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, uh, boy, I'm not used to endings like this. You know, no, no, man. right where where the bad guy li alive and well at the end, the henchman alive no, and well at the well. end of the film. Yeah. I don't know well, if he's well. He's, he's well enough to drive a car. Like, yeah, that, yeah. Thing, that, that tree, that should, have, that tree that. should have snapped his neck. <laughs> I know. He's wearing well, that headgear though, and he's all stiff. Scott, in, the, yeah. in the very end, at the the very last shot and the last line from Lazenby, like weren't weren't you asking mm. yourself? To, I didn't know George Lazenby had this in him. Like, I mean, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little surprised. Yeah, that stuff. But also, I didn't. I was surprised. Telly Savalas had that in him. I know a lot of it was stunt people, but <laughs> uh, we haven't even talked about that yet. Telly Savalas as as Blofeld yeah. also surprisingly worked for me. Surprisingly I didn't. Good. Oh, yeah. And maybe it's because he's good. less than he. Yeah, it didn't start out great, but it's less than two. It's less than two dimensional. Usually, this guy's yeah. petting a cat and going, "Yes, minions do my bidding," and that's all you get out of the guy. And this one, he's like moving around and saying shit and hey, doing things. Walking. And yeah. he's trying to go from he's trying to go from a uh, bad guy to legit uh aristocrat count. Arist yeah. yeah, account, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, wow, okay, interesting. And I don't know, I mean, the low list thing. I don't know about legit weird. count because he's basically trying to convince people that he's a fake count. But. Yeah, yeah. He, he wants he he's he's sick of money, he wants power this time, essentially is what right. it's all yeah. about, right? Yeah. And uh or, or but, I mean, he's, but the other Blofelds rule from a a small a room with an aluminum door that comes up yeah. and comes down yeah. he's out there in the field with everybody with leading his his guys on skis and saying you three go after him because i know i'm gonna blow up the i'm gonna cause an avalanche <laughs> by the way but <laughs> i don't need to tell them that but he's out there yeah. in the field with the with the guys actually fighting as opposed to just, yeah, yeah just i kind of enjoyed that small room i love yeah. the uh the other thing okay so if there's a criticism i'd like to levy here it would be this uh, why were you so inconsistent, director man, at making this movie uh, at different times of the day, but being very inconsistent uh, about it? Yeah, <laughs> like the so, beach especially. It's so bad, dude. It, it was nighttime, to daytime, full light. Uh, yeah, yeah, daytime, it's... nighttime, daytime, nighttime. They're on the and skis. It's... I'm like, wait, did they start at dusk? And it's just, oh no, they started in the morning. Okay, because it's getting lighter. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's night again. Like, holy shit, they were all yeah. over the place. And I understand production issues, right? It's hard. Mm -hmm. You're outside. You're filming and in the literal Alps. They film all this stuff where they said oh. they were. And, and it's, it's hard. Yeah, I get and, it. And it's got a, quick cuts too, like a like a Guy Fieri show. It's so it, like except rapid fire. It's just so quick cuts, except when it's not when you like when it's like a horrific death, like the guy that flew off the, oh, the hill. Geez. You're yeah. like, oh, that guy flew off. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. we're still on him. We're, we're still, watching oh, a we're mannequin <laughs> slowly float down. We're going yeah. all the way. We're sticking with the scene. All right, let's go. The, the movie down. loves to use uh, fast, fast motion, you know, sped up uh, yeah. film. Oh, yeah. Except when this guy's falling for some reason, it's going <laughs> yeah. real nice and slow. Yeah, yeah that was weird. But there's a great scream there. I recorded it. I'll play yeah. it later. Yeah. Oh, good. I didn't know there was. Oh, it was right. an amazing scream. I mean, it was it was worthy. Make that the Wilhelm. We'll get to it. We'll play it. But yeah. yeah. So uh, I think yeah. this was uh, the director of photography. This was the cinematographer's only James Bond movie. Oh, weird. I His name it. is uh, uh, Michael Reed. Right. And uh, like, there's a decision here from the very, very beginning to just darken stuff that he doesn't want you paying any attention to. Mm -hmm. And like, I thought it, it was artistic enough that I stopped thinking about it. You know, at right. the very beginning, you're like, wow, this was shot at noon and everything is so dark inside the car. Right. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't, you literally a lot can't of see James Bond. Yeah. And, but like, but again. you're like, oh, so there's a decision here. This is overt. They're trying to make me not look at the details of James Bond's face or whatever. Oh, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. you know, like it didn't it didn't ruin the movie. It just it was a decision that is kind of questionable because we're we're used to seeing newer movies where you can clearly see everything with all the the hd you know yeah that's right. true it's oddly enough by the way uh you look at this guy's other uh, filmography the cinematographer michael reed and this is really the only 
film that you you see in this thing that's recognizable it's a bunch of uh things like you know the gorgon the devil ship pirates the ugly gorgon. duckling etc yeah um well i know you you have all those on the like, special <laughs> edition the gorgon. Anyway. Yeah. but he also worked on the new avengers uh british television oh. series which didn't star diana rigg as emma Peel, oh. but starred the aforementioned joanna lumley <laughs> oh really interesting <laughs> so it's like yeah a little weird little uh six Connection. degrees of uh yeah. of uh, Diana Rigg, I guess, or something. I'm glad you um, brought that up because I would also like you to be the person to talk about the connection to the last Daniel Craig Bond movie. What is the oh, connection yeah. between the two? So oh, it's so know. good. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Daniel Craig film, um, so No Time to Die, is, is uh, I watched a whole, uh, a whole um, YouTube video about this, which I think was brilliant. I should put a link to it, give you guys a link to it to watch it too. But it shows you how um, there are the obvious uh um homages to previous bond films like you know the james bond down the tunnel daniel craig and he turns and he shoots just like the opening credits do mm -hmm. and then as he and the woman he loves are driving through uh the um the countryside on in a in an aston martin they play the strings from we have all the time in the world to kind of say ah here you go james here's the love of your life and guess what we're gonna f this one up for you as well <laughs> but that whole <laughs> It's the first time, I think, first and only time that a James Bond movie musically has fully referenced another James Bond film. This one does it a little bit, right? Like when he's going through his desk uh, yes. and finding yes. all of the previously on James Bond uh, <laughs> items. Like here's here's somehow he has Ursula Andress's belt yeah. with her knife. <laughs> he's been keeping yeah. in his desk drawer. Oh, no, yeah. He apparently kept it in water because that thing was so rusty. <laughs> oh, it totally was. And uh, but but uh, there's a lot more apparently in No Time to Die. So the opening credits of No Time to Die actually shows the dots from the opening uh, part of Doctor No. It shows giant statues falling down, like the opening of uh, Golden Eye. It shows uh, a trident of some a uh, character holding a trident in in silhouette it was mm. an, an homage to this film because that was in the opening credits with the. The, the booby ladies who basically are just yeah. told stand in this position so he can clearly see your nipples yeah uh, yeah make stuff. sure that happens late yeah. 60s ladies mm. but no time to die i mean i i really just thought oh maybe it's got one or two references no it references like eight or nine of the other james bond films well i'll, I'll send that video because it's amazing yeah well i think i'll um that link put that well it is in our group thing i'll stick it in no the, it's a different one the one i posted in there is just the we have all the time in the world musical ah uh, okay yeah put actually um i'll just put both in their post because i think yeah, people cool. love that it'll be on patreon and then we'll stick it in the discord or something for everybody cool. else um i also love the music uh, speaking of music um yeah. the it, oh, it surprised me because the last few I have not been into very much. And some of it, like the cheesy, like, let's lounge out here in the uh, by the pool music. I love that part. That stuff's terrible. About the, mm -hmm. oh. That music is terrible. Are you talking about the Louis Armstrong thing? Or are you talking about? No, that was also weird. I don't I didn't love that I either. Loved it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's such a great song. <laughs> it was fine. And it's and it is so it's so different than everything else because Bond yeah. is actually in love this time, right? So yeah, I right. kind of right. I thought and he fit. really feels like they have all the time in the world. And when yeah. you're married yeah. to James Bond or when you're in a relationship with James Bond, you are going to die. Yeah, <laughs> yes. die. You'll right. die it's another day and today is what you'll do. That's right, exactly. But the but the main theme uh, that was throughout the thing that wasn't that not that but the yeah. the unique theme is so <laughs> evocative. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that is so yeah. iconic for me, and I didn't know. I don't even know. Well, I guess we've probably heard something like it before, right, or since. Okay, so yes, so for two reasons. One, it gets referenced in later films. Okay, but for another, <laughs> this is John Barry, uh, like his first like big hit, mm. and he is a uh, very similar to himself for the rest of his career. Um, not like. Not like in a bad way. Like he doesn't. He isn't like self-referencing. But there's a sound here that you're that you're recognizing from other John Barry scored movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and, probably and like what the, it is. Yeah, and 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 he also uh, like he scored the Living Daylights, and I, I, I'm sure this exact song is just replayed there. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's mm -hmm. very good, <clears throat> and it really is evocative of the spy genre in general, and also James Bond in specific. And every time it was on, I was more into it. Like it really helped illustrate yeah. what was happening. 
These are all surprises, man. I it's came also, into the- it's also an unbond theme because unlike the James so the James Bond theme goes it escalates, right? It rises. Right, right, exactly. Right. This one goes dun, 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 and then it yeah. puts the music over the top of it. So it does the opposite. Wait, well, what's so funny? Don't I just- don't know him being here with music class with Ibit is my most favorite thing, hearing <laughs> it, you do the yeah, thing. Yeah, but it descends, I which is it. a really cool different uh different thing than the regular james bond i'm telling thing. you the, the entire movie it's like every part of it and i realize only time this director ever made these movies only time that for the actor obviously it's only time for the uh, actress right mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. everything about it feels like these decisions were made to do a different kind of thing which is which is funny because they're basing it on like the 11th book yeah. <laughs> right yeah at this mm-hmm. point <clears throat> sorry at this point, Ian Fleming has changed the character in the books because he's seen the movies. And so like the character is starting to become very Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he wasn't yeah. really he wasn't really talked about in those terms in the early book, but yeah. like now, oh, we have Sean Connery. I have to make him more like Sean Connery. And like it's it's a very interesting thing. The the I and I, I hate to take it so seriously also because it doesn't deserve that. Like these are supposed to be fun, silly action movies, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this had Not emotion this and one. stuff. I mean, I guess I guess we expected you know, with modern stuff like the Craig movies, we all yeah not only expected the more serious takes but also kind of i feel like we kind of demanded it just the yeah, taste of the yeah. modern day or whatever it couldn't be so goofy you couldn't have i mean you could but you can't really have these these uh henchmen with crazy problems you know mads mickelson's bleeding eyes about as close as you're going to get in the craig movies mm-hmm. and and i like that when it's earned and this movie earned a lot of that yeah. like really Thanks felt for, genuine and the thing at the end like Every other James Bond movie we've seen up till now from the the first Connery and everything we've seen since, they end with him in some impossible situation where he's got a girl in the back seat of a hover car and they're and the and you know, MI6 is back there going, Oh, James, you where's yeah. James Bond? Where, and he's like, where oh, is he? We can't find him on our radar. Oh, it's because he's getting down in a lifeboat. Yeah, exactly. Time, they didn't do that at all. First- it was hard. Well, did the first the first ending before we had the post ending uh, was him uh, making out with Saint Bernard, uh, who was bringing him a drink. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's exactly. No, but that's exactly right. That was yeah. a reference to uh, how other James Bond movies end. And you might be forgiven if you've never seen this for like standing up. All right, good. That was a good one. Doug. He's that dog. Go get him a. Go get him a. What does he ask for? Uh, Brandy, probably. Brandy. Yeah. Brandy. Usually, what's in a uh, uh, Saint Bernard's? Is that? I, I guess that really is a thing where Ber- Saint Bernard's used uh, to carry alcohol. brandy in a little barrel underneath yeah. their necks. On yeah. The yeah, alcohol is. Yeah, alcohol is supposed to fight yeah. the effects of uh, hypothermia. Blah blah blah. I guess. I, yeah, I guess so. That's the sure. idea, right? I Andrews. mean, it, pro- it probably does temporarily. I would have to think. Yeah. yeah. It makes yeah. you forget about it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. You makes you have a good time. You drink enough. Like I'm gonna die in the Yukon, but at least I'm having fun. Um, yeah, but like you know that that decision, and there is the trivia says there was a whole alternate ending where they drive off in pure bliss, happiness time. Mm -hmm. But not for long though. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And I think the book isn't the book. This is based on this. This is all how that went down, right? She died. I don't. Yeah. This is one I never read. Randy, you said you read this one. Yes, and it's uh, quite different. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, is basically, it? she dies at the beginning of the next of uh, Free Rise Only is the next book, or oh, I know it's not the next movie, okay. but uh, the but next book is You Only Live Twice. You Only Live Twice, and she dies at the beginning of that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay so they changed some and of that. The I mean, ending is different, but a lot of the book is the same. In the and uh, yeah. we also have um, a completely different plot, but the definitely the same thing where we go to a mountaintop uh revolving restaurant and mm-hmm. man i was excited about that i've i've seen this movie a few times but like this time i, I was the most excited about that restaurant up in, in the oh Alps. yeah i want to the- go there you know, like personally yeah. i want to go there they even have a note in here uh let's see the headquarters partially completed restaurant on top of mount Sh- shittlehorn or whatever the hell you say it there. <laughs> my favorite disney ride it's it really is s a s sorry s c h i t no i'm sorry s c h i l t h o r n schlitterhorn 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 shithorn anyway the owners Allowed I filming. <laughs> they allowed filming on the condition that the production company pay 125 grand and made the interior sets as permanent fixtures. 
uh, and, and construct a helicopter pad. Uh, it involved 500 tons of concrete being taken up oh, by a helicopter wow. at a cost of 125 grand. So they, they stayed within their budget. When the restaurant opened, it was given the name Pease Gloria, uh, or Piz, I don't know, uh, <laughs> used in the movie. The only public access to the restaurant is by cable car. And uh, see, this restaurant was the first established revolving mountain restaurant in the entire world. There are more now, oh, but cool. was, uh, nice. Yeah. A little, little background apparently, there for you. Apparently, there is a ton of James Bond memorabilia at Peace Gloria. Mm. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, they have like a whole James Bond museum up there. Yeah. I imagine this is like you know, if you are a, a James Bond super fan, and I wish I had the money to be a James Bond super fan. You probably <laughs> you go to all these filming locations as you know part of a part of a mission, basically around the world to hit up you know all of these different spots so that you can see where they filmed it. And, well, and uh, wherever you are in the world, you're not that far from a iconic James no, Bond filming next, location. Next mm -hmm. uh, uh, movie we're seeing takes place in Vegas, and uh, <laughs> we can yep. we can see a lot of those things. Ooh, I didn't know that. The next one's in yeah. Vegas. Cool. Yeah, I'm down for that. Our forever uh, some Las Vegas business. Nice. And uh, was that also Connery's last official? That was Connery's last official one, right? Last, last canon Bond. Right, right. Last right. where in. Broccoli was involved or whatever. Or right, exactly. How, however that worked. I don't understand how that shit works. But this is interesting. This is the other interesting bit. I was thinking the other day, why aren't modern, more modern um, serialized movies, which is what James Bond is, a serialized films based on books, but for the most part, you know, it's a serialized films thing. That everybody accepts that eventually there's a new Bond all the time, and we get excited about it. It's actually kind of yeah. tradition. So you're like, "Oh, who's going to replace Daniel Craig?" That's where we're at now. Prior to that, it was like, "Who's going to take over for <laughs> Handsome Boy?" And it turned out Daniel Craig was up for the job. Right. And you know, we don't we don't right. know until we see, and it's all very exciting. Why doesn't this happen with Indiana Jones? Why doesn't this happen with? Um, other serialized we, stuff. Why don't we allow it for might that? Have, it might have at the time. You know, we come at it and we've we've already when we came around, there had already been two or three Bonds by the time we started watching Bond films. Yeah. So we've we grew up in a world where Bond is ever changing. We grew up with Indiana Jones being Harrison Ford, and I think we'd have a really hard time if they said, and now featuring uh, Timothy Chalamet as Indiana Jones. Yeah. We probably have a, have a bit of a problem. So we, don't, so we don't have the stomach for it now. It's interesting yeah. because we have this one example. We're happy to keep that tradition alive, but everything else, that feels, yeah, that feels they, weird. It, also, it probably also has something to do with the character. James Bond can be. It, it feels like his character is more about the, the methods Position. more than the man. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Whereas... I think we'd we'd probably be okay with uh, Jason Bourne being played by somebody else besides yeah, uh, and, and that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Because the, mm -hmm. those those characters are kind of they're just names that were applied to the position. I mean, we yeah. don't even James Bond isn't even his real name, right? I mean, how so, many I mean, Jack? No, Ryan's it is. We James had, Bond is his real name. I've, okay, uh, I feel like I I've had this discussion seven. a lot lately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, excuse his, me, Mister. Just get to one more time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the Bond family gets established kind of in this book um or mm -hmm. yeah, in the books around it and right. his history and so forth like the reason all of these agents get double o numbers is so that they can be anonymous when talking out loud but they all have their regular names you know like he was he was in the military previously and went by his regular name it's he's so famous in this in his world that it doesn't make sense right yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, like yeah. it would be it would be more realistic the first time he, Telly Savalas lays eyes on him to go oh you're James Bond I've I've seen you yeah. on in the news okay like, now that was right, my other right, question yeah. can you guys clear this up I know way more Bond knowledge in this room than I have mm -hmm. uh, Blofeld's been in previous films this is mm -hmm. the same dude so is this a prequel where he doesn't know who James Bond is. Is this uh, just no, a reason? Got, they got, well, he, they got criticized for that because he's actually he's met him before. Uh, yeah, I met in him the in the volcano. Like they yeah. fought in the volcano, and uh, I guess we're saying that his disguise of glasses, because even he, he right. like even takes the glasses. It takes a lot more than you know than a simple disguise to fool me, Mister Bond. Um, but yet the Wait, two of them it, met when he was uh, Donald Pleasance in uh, in the in the volcano <laughs> in the last yeah. movie. When he was yeah. Donald well, and, Pleasance. Sorry, go and, ahead. That's just funny the way you said that. Go ahead. One <laughs> thing One thing here is presumably between You Only Live Twice and this movie, there's a significant amount of time that passes. 
Mm-hmm. But this movie just does not care about that continuity yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I it's it, that's my, that was my question. I guess was this meant to be a restart? Because go back if you go back in time, you say, oh, well, they've dropped Connery, so here's your chance to to redo it or not redo it, but set up some yeah. new see, things that will continue for his run. Because they don't have this. I they don't know that eventually we're going to have nine James Bonds and it's going to be. One of the reasons people love these movies is we get new actors in it. Like no one's gonna, mm-hmm. they don't know yeah. that in 1969, so mm-hmm. they're just like, I bet they're scared. They're probably like, well, shit, we got uh, Connery's out. Oh no, what do we do? Mm-hmm. Well, there's this young guy, this Lazenby fella. Let's, you know, like I, I actually trying to get into the head of these people back then. It must have been chaos. I want to make the case that the worst thing we've all done to ourselves is constantly ask who's your favorite Bond, who's your least favorite Bond actor. Because th- like this movie has really shown that it is so much more about the script and the stories between the characters. The freaking Money Penny Crying really got me this time, and I'm like, yeah. oh, because we have uh, an actual story being told here. And I and I and I I was like, I don't really care who's playing Money Penny. Like it's just like Lois Maxwell does this perfect job, and she really conveys the thing. But if anybody else had been doing it, I would have felt the same, you know? Yeah. And like, Mm -hmm. that is a testament to the, how Lazenby really rose to the occasion for this movie. Yeah. 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 It's really something. I feel like it, I don't know, man. This is one of the more surprising film sack experiences I've had. Yeah. Because I went in thinking, this is going to be shit. It was not. (laughs) It was not shit. I mean, it's aged. It's got its problems. It's not like it's perfect. And that day night cycle problem is a real distracting thing if you're not really paying attention. The the green screen racing scenes are terrible, Uh, Uh, but better than they had previously been. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I I, want to point out we saw some garbage previously (laughs) in action sequences. Yeah. (laughs) And we were like, okay, with it. Look, it's Thunderball 1965. Like, we're, we're fine. But mm. Mm, this is actually pretty good. The pretty the good. stage the stage projection shots are okay. I'm not saying they're good, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. okay. You can forgive it. You yeah, know? yeah. I could see. I could see walking away feeling okay about that stuff. But it, the, you know, it's the, old. The it, car ice racing scenes are yeah. awesome. Pretty good. Like, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I was I I can't believe they pulled it off. Actually, they I, had they had some real cheese ball stunts, even with like the luge, not luge, but the what were those? Uh, yeah, the, there was a luge yeah, or a bobsleigh, uh, bobsleigh, yeah, whatever. The cool yeah. runnings. Yeah, yeah, the cool runnings yeah. bar. When when there were parts in that where I was like, okay, that was cheese, that was cheese, that was cheese. And then there's this wipeout scene toward the end of that sequence that was like legit. I was like, holy mm-hmm. shit, mm-hmm. that yeah. guy, whoever that stunt man was is he's either dead. screwed or he's the best stunt man in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Earlier yeah. in the film there's a there's a action sequence where a car blows up as people are getting out of it mm-hmm. and the last guy out of the car looks like he dies. Like yeah. I was I, I was mm-hmm. man I hope he was wearing a lot of asbestos because that guy <laughs> man he was in the explosion as it exploded sh- later. Yeah, it sure felt like it. Um there's also let's see the, uh, let's see if I can find this where is it? Uh oh uh, a weakness of the th- well, not a weakness, just a different take, I guess. That usually you have some kind of weird sub boss, right? Like some kind of yeah, henchman that's yeah. like he's got metal teeth or his one it's eye. The or woman with the, uh, the the knives in her shoes or whatever. Yeah, his face is embedded with diamonds or whatever it is. This German whole German lady, <laughs> like Irma <laughs> Yeah, Irma I guess that Irma works. Bunt. I don't know. I still kind of feel torn about it. The only part where I don't feel like it works is when he pops back into Ruby's room to to get a little more, <laughs> and a, he gets almost all the way to the bed and doesn't recognize that it's that it's Irma. The, the, the beauty the of yeah. that is that he's the one who keeps telling people to leave the lights off, so yeah. he yeah. brought that on himself. <laughs> it's so weird, I'm like yeah. why? Yeah, I don't understand. It is that was a weird thing to do. But I respect yeah. it. <laughs> I I really liked Ilsa Stepat's uh, performance in this movie. She's uh, she's like fifty or fifty one when they're making this movie, and she's so dynamic. Like you, yeah. you can't. I I, I don't know. You I, give I don't me the book, the... and I will give it to everyone. Yeah. She, right. She really she did, breaks out. She didn't out need a gun. knife in her, in her foot. You yeah. know, like she, yeah. she, yeah. she does it all with her words. Yeah, and that's I guess that's just different, and I, it's it's fine. I just I guess I just was missing that one aspect of the Bond movies, which is like 
here's a guy with spikes in the his face. Disposable or... henchman. The, right, the over-the-top disposable henchman. Yeah, I don't know why I like. Yeah. I even like those. Maybe yeah. it's wrong that and I like Blofeld them. And but... Blofeld ended up feeling most of that role, right? Because, I mean, he ended up being just, you know, crazy, sexy voice, mm. to, to hypnotizing everybody. By the way, I love yeah. it. It was Telly Savalas who did all the hypnotizing because even I was like, yes, <laughs> Telly Savalas, yes. I like, I like yes. him like this whole like desktop of cassette players. Yeah, and he says, yeah. Give cassette me cassette number please. seven. <laughs> give me cassette number eight. <laughs> yeah, it was. And some of that was a little hard to take seriously because it was yeah. like, oh, wait, these self-help tapes. This yeah. is the yeah. scheme. This is how we're doing this. Because he was like, you only think you're allergic to chicken. Really what <laughs> right. it is. is the, And I'm like, this is the premise of his whole. Yeah, you can't. I don't think you can cure allergies with hypnotism. Sorry. Uh, no, no, that was but weird. Do, but it's like, you know, I, after doing this better sleep thing, listening to this stuff before I go to sleep, <laughs> it's pretty dang close to what's happening to poor Ruby. Like if that thing comes on and she is out. So it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I can relate to that. that yeah, happens with me. I guess so. Anyway. Some of that, some of that stuff just was so like pretty ham fisted. And I, and I, and I, but I also like his big booming voice as he's like a uh, bonds, like sneaking around, stealthing around the place. And you hear this thing going, you only find peace with my program to elude you from the chicken allergy or whatever. The, the <laughs> penis is evil. Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. A little bit of that vibe. And I really appreciated yeah. some of that stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I went in going, dude, I'm as soon as I see Telly Savalas, I'm going to be annoyed. And sure enough, yeah. when I saw him, I was a little annoyed. Because I'm just like, that's not where he belongs. And then I very quickly went, no, 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 he's, this is good. He's Blofeld. Mm -hmm. Was there a scene where he was sucking on a lollipop Kojak style? I no. swear I saw it. Okay. Maybe I was just inserting You that. wanted to see he's, it. He's holding up a pen or something the first time you see him. And that's okay, the that's still cool. frame that gets used a lot of places. But uh, I spent way too long looking at his uh, earlobes to see if they like pinned I... him back or if he was... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just. I actually Googled. Does Telly Savalas have earlobes? Because it looked like it was such a believable looking uh, effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was we'll that was earlobes. that was interesting. Uh, he he. I, I guess mean, they just pinned him back or something. According to the trivia. I don't know. Yeah, yeah probably was, like taped him. A little glue there. Yeah. 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 Weird thing. Um, I like that the only real gadget we get is the most giant combination safe cracker and photocopier. Ooh. Uh, that, <laughs> that all replaced be, by cell phones now but yes pretty much yes, yes. but it's like this looks like this in. lottery system uh safe cracker <laughs> thing that is going through what looks like random numbers instead of just going sequentially to try and solve yeah. the safe it's like yeah that was weird i kept thinking yeah. some of the tech in this one looked better than previous ones it was less uh gray consoles with a bunch of knobs on it yeah but yeah. then there were parts where but i was that like thing was a little yeah holy was shit that was great it was a combination fax machine cop uh -huh. photostatic <laughs> yeah. copier slash you know, oh it was great he could have actually photocopied that centerfold and left it for the next person who yeah. comes to that lawyer's office who rips out the centerfold or your playboy magazine that's just, just a cold magazine don't that's don't, right. don't that's compromise rude. the uh value yeah, come uh, on that yeah. machine though they went to such great effort to get him that machine like he had to yes he had to go uh he had to go have a whole crew like take over a construction site with a with a crane uh -huh. <laughs> right. luckily, yeah. luckily father-in-law had the access to helicopters and yeah. you know construction but, equipment that was his day job like they had all this effort to get him that machine wouldn't it have been funny if he'd like gone to plug it in he's like oh no i'm in germany they don't use <laughs> right the yeah wrong wrong plug. <laughs> I didn't bring the, the international uh, <laughs> cable damn it <laughs> yeah there's uh Know, there's a lot to there's a lot to call out about its timing, but I don't know. Yeah. Just impressed with how it's dark it was. And, fun. and that piece of art, you see, you see that piece of art next to the tiniest elevator in the world, but that piece of art that's sitting there on the wall, and that one was like, oh my god, that's some pretty weird look, scary looking art. And it never dawned yeah. on me that oh no, they're going to use that as a weapon at some point. It is going to be yeah. the thing yeah. that he shoves somebody into to kill them. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, at the time, that's true. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff where you're you're a little surprised by what what part of the room got used for some bullshit. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. It, has there ever been more? Uh, up until this point, was there ever as much blood as there was? Even the shark pools and stuff didn't seem as much blood as that uh snow oh my gosh snow. the snow oh, grinder the, the, yeah, yeah. The... is that is that your min, is that your minion back there in the shredder then is what they should have said yeah yeah that guy went in and as soon as it started spewing out red chunks i went oh we're Ooh. we're going there in 69 are we yeah, all right this is a, yeah that was kind of cool i wrote that one and down what as well. did it, uh, 
there weren't too many, but there was one Idiot. after that, right? The uh, the one liner Bond says after. Oh, he uh, does a couple does. of one liners. He does a couple, yeah. but that was he said one after that one, didn't he? Like that guy. Fresh meat. I don't know what he said. Oh no, he <laughs> said um. Oh shoot. Uh, okay, he said okay. Blofeld joke was he's branching out. Yeah, he's bran- he, he branched out. He branched like out. Right. Yeah. But right. the guy right. in the grinder, what did he about? say? He said, yeah. said something yeah. like, uh, yeah. well, that's that's a that's a guy in a shredder. I don't know what he said. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a chalupa. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm going to jump into the quotes section of IMDb so I can find it. But uh, It's got to be in there, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah, here it is. He had a lot of guts. Oh, that was <laughs> a lot of guts. That's it's it. Oh, really, it was so bad. Really you kind of want Diana Ray to go, oh, dude. Uh, that guy just died. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. yeah. She's the, I mean, I she is trying the, to kill us, but you just, the guy just died and you're making jokes. I mean, thanks job. for saving me, but yeah. She's the conscience of the, uh, of the movie in a she lot is. of ways. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that is what makes her unique. And I haven't felt sure. that since, uh, the Craig years, like the, like Casino yeah. Royale had a kind of mirror story of this, right. Sort of. Right. Yeah. The, the um, green character. Yeah. V- uh, Vesper Lynn. Vesper Lynn. And, and all of that, plus what's her name entering the scene, like they treat the women like women in these new ones. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. treat them like objects. And I kind of, I mean, they they try to skirt it. But mm-hmm. what is? Do any of the Craig movies have <laughs> him just sleep? Do, is he <laughs> is he sleeping around with whoever ever? Daniel Craig. I don't feel like it. I don't, no, feel, I don't like, feel like it either. And and um, even Anna, oh, Anna what's her name? Anna Darmus um, comes in and is almost the closest thing that we get to the kind of the the bond girls of old right she comes in to do one specific thing uh she does it and then she's out and then she might even have a goofy name but even then it's like yeah nope she's she's just helping me uh uh wipe out a whole room full of bad guys and uh and then she's on her way yeah no no bedding i I feel (laughs) like bedding i feel like we they kind of pulled that off without too much notice I don't feel like people yeah. talked about it a lot. Maybe they would more now, or maybe they do now, and I just haven't been in those circles. But it's an yeah. interesting shift, and it felt like that was, even in the, um, what's his name? Uh, Remington Steel days. Can't think of his name. Uh, yeah. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan years. They st- yeah. There was still a lot of him going, oh, hello, he, he, he. Oh, ooh. yeah, still well, definitely I mean, a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes, I mean, you know, sex is a weapon. You know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't you know, mind it as a as a no. as a part of the thing. No. I just felt like it's cartoony in the old ones. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You're gonna give any of these women a brain, or are you just gonna make it so they just seem like, oh well, he comes in, he's got his wiles, he drops his freaking Scottish <laughs> skirt, and she laughs because it's true they wear nothing underneath. I assume that was the joke in this mm, one. Yeah, and, it's and there true. was there were a bunch of other dick jokes all scattered throughout about yeah. like he was feeling stiff. Or oh like, right, oh, a little yeah. stiffness. I'm gonna yeah. go to bed. I feel a little stiffness coming. Yeah, down. whatever that she was. Made something hard, hard on him. Or I just it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty over the top. So it's all the nice to be things. Known as an aid and not the symbol for infinity. By the way, sure, you know, sure. Yeah, but of but of all this praise, I'm giving it. It's my one. The only other complaint I have it is is probably the most sexist one I've seen. I, I can't think really? of one where uh, that's funny because what's her, Di- um, Diane Riggs character is like the opposite mm, right. of all of this. So it's yeah. she she acts as a real neutralizer for everything. But when he's being him, when he's being sexist, Bond. I mean, he really is. Like right. he's, he's on it. He's mm-hmm. slapping. He's taking for no reason, breaking a bed so a, the girl has to fall on top of him, and they gotta have sex oh, now. Yeah. And like he's just re- and then the chicken lady. He's just taking advantage of the chicken lady. You know, <laughs> never gonna hear it, are you? But nope, chicken lady. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop, caca, <laughs> caca. Exactly. <laughs> Mark uh, McKinnon, right. those Mark I kind of, right? I kind uh, of like chalk that up to you know, uh, uh, couch casting by Telly Savalas. He just, he just mm-hmm. picked susceptible women who were, you know, easily manipulated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was looking it's at like, the story. Now, That's where me. am I going to find one from Bulgaria? Hello, yeah, Bulgaria. Yeah. Do you have any hot women with allergies? Yep. Send them my <laughs> way. Come in, Bulgaria. I yeah. found the official ages uh, meant to. Look this up, and I just did. As as of 2021, George Lazenby, long, youngest actor to play 007 at the age of 29, the time of filming. The rest of the actors and their ages in no particular order. Sir Sean Connery, 31, as I think Dunaway mentioned or someone. Sure, sure, Sean Connery. Uh, Sir Roger Moore, 45. Boy, they started him late. Mm-hmm. Timothy yeah. Dalton, 40. Pierce Brosnan, 41. 
And Daniel Woo. Craig at 38. Woo! Wow. Yeah. Those all sound right to me, but boy, Lazenby yeah. played old. He did not he look sure 29. He looked older, yeah. Name a 29-year-old that he's... looks like that. My daughter just turned freaking 30. She looks five compared to that guy. I don't yeah. get it. He's, he's gotten a lot of sun, a lot of Australian sun on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that but, must be it. By the way, if we're going to ca- call people sir this or that, we need to be referring to Dame uh, Diana Rigg. Mm-hmm. Um, she got mm-hmm. her uh, membership in the Dame British Hood. Empire uh, about 20 years after this, which is remarkable yeah. that it took so long. Like She had been Emma Peel by this time, like, but they – finally recognized her in the late 80s and uh she is dame what a dame Rick. she had a uh, a recent thing everyone told me i should see her in and right before she died or it may have come out oh, oh last night in soho that, uh, last that night it? in soho yeah. yeah yeah i heard good things about her in that i recommended that one i think uh and i think that is streaming now and it's and it's it's weird and quirky and anya taylor joy is in it it's it's good all right and um, she yeah. uh she was nominated for a couple things for last night in soho Oh, oh really? She really? I didn't know that. Was, or, uh... Yeah, yeah. Like she she got nominated at the, like the Saturn Awards. Oh wow, that's cool. Cool. She kept real busy, like constant work, lots of interesting stuff. Um, mm-hmm. everything from TV to movies, you know, big stuff, comedies, whatever, all in between. I don't know. Just kind of feel like she's cool as shit. That's what I think. And she yeah. was yeah. gorgeous in '69. Good freaking hell. Yeah. yeah. But also looked like somebody I, I wouldn't want to try to objectify because she kicked my ass <laughs> you know right yes like yeah. i would be in huge you... trouble with her if i tried to do that right she just well, seems... yeah I, after but... like long after they've already had sex many many times they find themselves in a barn in the snow and he's like okay i i think we should get married and then she's like okay well then we're not going to have sex and he just like okay yeah. And he doesn't yeah. he doesn't yeah. stick to well, it he's the one who says no we need to save this for our wedding night and then yeah. a second later he kicks out the thing changed my mind remember that playboy yeah. of centerfold <laughs> yeah all i could think was i only pictured you naked so i'll use this rake to break the bed and then we'll do it yeah <laughs> right i did by the way i really tried to figure out a way to do uh, jay giles band centerfold for my song there just oh, wasn't great. wasn't enough to work uh work so you're there, but... are you yeah. uh i was a, do you think people up in the alps like if you live up there you don't lock your doors or your or your gates or your anything because they just pulled your barn in. yeah your barn yeah. they just pulled in there I love, that place looked abandoned except for the horses were like we haven't seen people in years <laughs> we're starving <laughs> <laughs> we're so hungry <laughs> there was so much hay though there was so much hay there was there like was. that barn that barn has went more hay than any than barn it was yeah, yeah. hay everywhere i felt like that, itchy. i was itchy and that town boy <laughs> that was a party town man they had like races oh, going yeah. on they had like yeah. it, that, that place was a festival now I, I said out loud i want to go to a snow carnival like that just yeah. seems like oh, so much yeah. fun there was a, this is very much like, I was looking at that saying, oh yeah, we have something, we have something about the 10th, the size of that here in Colorado every year called the Christkindle market, which is a German market that uh, sells glue vine. You saw the, the big glue vine um, yes. uh, uh, shop there and all the different uh, breads and pastries and, mm. and schnitzel and stuff like that. There's something like that here again a tenth the size of what that was but that's what it reminded me of yeah we have a similar thing in park city every year it's pretty cool like that kind of stuff's awesome i yeah. uh cold though really cold yeah did you, <laughs> did you guys notice the shot where uh she's racing on the snow and she runs one car off the road off the track <laughs> one and it, and it goes <laughs> it goes into a crowd of people like oh yes. yeah 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 yes. there are I, people who take a car to the face <laughs> yeah i have that i have stunt point. questions like what how how yeah. they pull off some of that because there is some real near miss stuff going on in that race yeah. that was crazy and uh, that race would have been everybody every one of those race car drivers would have completely come to a stop like what is going on right now plus you can't have a car chase uh, in a circle which is basically what they were doing. You just stop and wait. <laughs> right, the guy just waits for them to come around again, and there you yeah. go, and you've got them. Yeah. Now, I got a question that maybe, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't paying, and I was paying attention. I just don't know why I noticed this or didn't <laughs> notice this. But the very first scene, okay, the beach fight, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the whole thing starts with a bunch of shots of parts of his face because we're not meant to see the whole Bond yet or whatever, I guess. Right. That was the weird that <laughs> You was don't the get thing. the full Bond. You don't get full Bond. <laughs> right. And he's chasing this girl who cuts him off, and then he gets interested and he's like, oh, so he starts chasing her and then he drives onto the beach. And then I'm not sure what happened. She was out walking in the water 
committing suicide or trying to, which I never yeah. understand. Okay, I'm that's like, the part I, I don't I, get. She was trying to kill herself out there? Was that, that what was that's happening? That's the idea. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I've often sure. thought about it. I've seen it portrayed in movies. I'm like, how do you kill yourself? I mean, once you get out so far, it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, because if you just keep going, you will die. So that is what well, she yeah, was doing. Like, he, I mean, he went out but to save her. Is, your body kind of saved yourself at that point. It's like, nope, nope. And that's Diana Rigg. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this is the first they've met, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So Correct. who were the guys that then so, showed up to kill I mean, everybody? He was hanging out there and he sees them chasing her and he that's, decides he's going to get involved. Oh, I, I think that's he's actually bodyguards. after those guys. Oh. Oh. Those guys. I thought that was her bodyguards gotcha. who had okay. been protecting so her. She is again. She is. She knows she's being pursued, and they're going to kill her. Yeah. And so she's like, "No, you're not. I'm going to kill me." And then <laughs> so she goes. To, she goes to just kill herself before she gets killed. And James Bond happens to be pursuing those. Those. I thought that was. I thought that was rich. Rich girl. Uh. Uh. Bodyguard. Bodyguards from her. From her. Like show up later in her. Um. Body girl. In her room and stuff. I don't like, know. They're like. Yeah, like it is is daddy's daddy's guards that are supposed to be gardener. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know how that's that worked at all, but I but maybe you're right. Like I don't know. I that's my whole point is the whole first part of this movie, kind of still not sure what the frick happened. Mm-hmm. And why is he involved yeah. in it? I and, actually like I think you put well, posted a couple of uh pictures of of the fight scenes. I thought it was the most energy I had seen in any of the Bond fight scenes up to this point. It was it felt mm-hmm. like it was really aggressive and i kind of liked it maybe from because he's a few years younger than the other guys maybe i don't know very physical well not only that but very uh well yeah very very um i don't know again jump jump to the craig years where things felt more real less right less goofy or over the top like even our even our stuff with q was early on and it wasn't even a gadget showcase really it was him talking to m wasn't even talking to bond and then later made jokes at the wedding but (laughs) like you had Q had a uh, explosive lint. I think that was the only. Thing yeah, he had right. explosive, yes, lint. explosive lint, radioactive lint, so radioactive lint. Somebody's tracking. tracking. That's track what it was. Them. Yeah, that and I guess that is stupid. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like that is pretty yeah. dumb. But, but I'm not. You do, get, you do get something finally beyond the the normal flirting between him and Money Penny, which is her crying at the wedding, which I really, yeah. I did really like. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. I felt complained like, about that first scene on the beach. Is that. Uh, Tracy, Tracy's going to leave. So she yeah. gets in the nearest car, which is a freaking <laughs> Aston Martin DBS yes. Vantage. Yeah. And then right. she drives it 100 yards. She drives it to her trades, car. Trades yeah. down to a Mercury Cougar. <laughs> I'm like, what would you ever get out of that fastback? That, I just, what? That, that whole scene is weird because he drives down to the beach. I'm like, just mm-hmm. get out. It's not that far. Just She just walked in there herself. She's like oh, two it's seconds so hard to you. run in sand like that. I, he, he, you did the right thing by driving. Imagine driving down there in that sand. You'd be like, I'm never getting out of here. <laughs> never. Yeah. yeah. It's it's interesting. Some of those choices are interesting, but I really, really, really liked it. And uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know, man. When we get yeah. to the next one, are we going to be all disappointed because the next yes. one's not great? Yeah, I want, I want you to know. We are going to have some very... Disappointments. <laughs> we are going to have some very fun henchmen. Mr. Wint and Mr. Kid are are yeah. some of the weirdest James Bond uh, or, or villain henchmen you're ever going to find. Okay, my, in that case, My recollection, and I've watched through all these movies several times, but not in a very long time, uh, my recollection is that Diamonds Are Forever is the movie that made me go, oh, I don't actually think Sean Connery knows how to play this character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. All right, we have that to look forward to. Uh, do you also look forward to clips when we when we play them? Do you I like look those? forward to them every week. Oh, great, because here's some every now. Week. Yeah, every week. Well, every most week. weeks. Uh, let's see here. Let's start with this one. It's through me a little bit. It's not. It's not Sean Connery. Good morning. My name's Bond. James Bond. Miss. Uh... Don't move. <laughs> Miss, don't move. <laughs> don't move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, first, it threw me at first because I was like, "That is not. That's not James." Is that Bond. a first name or last name? Yeah, that's not my yeah. favorite thing. Uh, here's a lame horn. No matter how fancy your car is. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> <laughs> really lame. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Can see. A casino nonsense sounds like Simlish to me. So I'll play some of that. Here's some Simlish at the casino. Vamil. The bank Vamil. Give the bank. Vamil the bank. Give the bank. The bank of Vamil. Vamil the bank. The bank of Vamil. Vamil the bank. Bank Vamil. Banco. Banco de Boo. <laughs> it was i i played baccarat once like it was like uh uh at the um 
uh what's the hard rock what it was the hard rock before it became virgin oh and uh, it was yeah. an empty baccarat table and uh so me and, and crazy neighbor dave was with me we we're like have you ever played baccarat no me neither well let's sit at this table and we'll have the the dealer kind of tell us what to do which they did they were happy to do it i'm like yeah i'm never i don't ever have to play this ever again but it sure was fun playing it the one time yeah I was, i've never played it either but do they repeat the name of it or is that is that what i'm hearing in a different language no okay they, they were it was just like all right you want 25 or you want 15 here or something like that you're gonna draw right. until you get 15 yeah and I, I guess in french these guys are just saying where the betting is going they're who's, betting is going right, to the bank the player the player the bank yeah, yeah. I love Bond movies. Always use the little um, uh, card spatulas. Oh yeah, the card spatulas yeah, and the yeah. long and the chips that aren't little discs, but yeah. they're like big flat plates. I like that. Too. Those are so cool. They remind yeah. me of like Star Trek uh, chips that Dave has got to hurry up and swap swap around. You know, uh, right? Yeah. That that like, you've re- just caught into this movie has a gun in a bucket. Uh oh, gun um, in the bucket. We don't have a theme for that. Hold on, maybe I John, do. We'll just do bucket. Get a bucket. Where's that? Grab a bucket. There you go. James, you... James Bond gets to his hotel room, picks a spot next to the bed, and puts his gun in a drawer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Tracy steals it mm-hmm. and leaves money there. Right? Yeah. Oh my. Because uh, apparently this uh not so Lannister so... always pays her debt. Oh no, yes. yes. <laughs> she said. A Tyrell, a Ty- a Tyrell, a Tyrell, a Tyrell always uh, Tyrell leaves always behind her money. Yeah. Tyrell always <laughs> but, kills her grandchild. Anyway, yes. But where's, where's oh, wait, the gun? Oh, wait, they weren't anyway. Yeah. She yeah. stole a gun from James Bond. Where's the gun? The, the mm. gun never happens had it again in the, next in the movie. Scene. She, um, yeah, oh, yeah, didn't she? She, have it brand- she brandishes it for something. Doesn't she take it out and name it as something? I could have sworn she did. She did yeah. earlier. The next, yeah, scene, had it. the next scene is him going golfing and getting captured. Um, I like the what's the next scene with her though? No, he meets her. He meets her at a at a bullfight. <laughs> oh my oh, god, that, that's oh, not a bullfight. Yeah. That's a bull harassment. That yeah, was a bullfight. Bull tease. <laughs> you can see why they do not like, uh, or p- why people don't like those bullfights, oh, man. Yeah. yeah, just given that god. bullshit. The fact that that guy though, like, stands in front, does a little wiggle around, and then positions himself so that he's right between the two horns, and the bull just picks him up and pushes him against the wall. Right. It's like just. Uh, uh, four inches either direction, and that guy is gored. Yeah. Well, the bull, the bull had the shorn horns, but still, those horns are going uh, to hurt. Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. they're now they're instead of being really sharp, blunt instruments, they're very heavy, blunt instruments. They're going to get you either <laughs> right. way. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, this whole movie, we just see dudes getting wasted, like destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of that. If they weren't using green screen, it felt like they were almost. It was. That's why the green screens almost took me out. It's not that I didn't expect them. It's just that some of the stunts were so hardcore that yeah. you then see some green screen and going, "Why are you bothering them with that? Just go hardcore like you did in the first scene. Like, just make it all bloody. Let's go." Mm-hmm. Uh, here's what my Sims uh, said when I sent him to my bathroom. I blocked with a toilet. Thank you, boo. All right, thanks, buddy. <laughs> get a boo. Back at a boo. Uh, here's uh, oh, there's here's here's your lady. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? Suppose I were to kill you for a thrill. She and that's when she had a gun. Yeah, yeah. She, she had his gun. I think. Yeah, had point. his gun at that point, I believe. Uh, here's James Bond slapping ladies. All right, there's that. Yeah. Hey, it's better than her dad that just full on punches her in the face to knock her out. Yeah, and he's like, "Spare the rod, ha ha ha!" And I'm like, "Dude, Jeez, you just I, punched oh. your daughter, you a hole." Like, yeah, full on. Yeah, turn around and hit him. Uh, let's see. Do not, <laughs> do not kill me. Do not kill me, Mister Bond. Do not kill me. No, do not kill me. Come on. He's a great stereotype in the Bond movies. He's that guy who um, has tons of money, is kind of skeevy, but also is going to help James, sort of. You know what I mean? There's always that guy in these movies. Mm-hmm. The Russian oh, yeah. guy from Goldeneye. The um, he's played by Hagrid. Can't remember. Uh, uh, Bob Billy Bob Barker. Whatever it is. Yeah, there was that. That guy was in. Uh, there was a guy like that in From Russia with Love. Too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these things. Yeah. I like. I like. I kind of always like that. Um, okay, here's a cool sound and then an UG. Mm-hmm. Oh no! It's just, mm-hmm. <laughs> wow! I wrote UG, but yeah. So that's it's, where uh, uh, did you did you, you know. did you get a sound of somebody being impaled on the murder spikes on the wall? <laughs> uh, no, there was too much music there, but I right. I appreciate right. your your noticing it because it was. Why the hell are there murder spikes on your wall? Who would do that? Yeah, perfect for mounting uh, your opponent. Oh, that's the other thing. There was no girl on stupid 
perfunctory girl on girl fight in this movie. Oh yeah, they almost always yeah. do that. Instead, she she was holding her own against these a hole dicks mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. put a-hole the guy dicks. on spikes. A hole dicks, <laughs> right? So you you're saying they could have had the Contessa fight against the German old lady because they've done that, but they do that all the time in Bond movies, and yeah. and I hate it. And in this case, it was like, oh no, she's actually got to fight these guys, and it's hard. Like it's not they're not faking like she's some kind of martial art genius it's just that these guys are big and stronger and heavier and then she figures out a way to get them like wall spikes or whatever i like i liked it i don't know if you can yeah. tell i don't know if you can yeah. tell but diana rig and i we're having a moment if, uh, <laughs> it makes sense that if you're trying to escape the mountain lair all you got to do is throw yourself down the mountain yeah. what didn't make sense to me was how quickly everybody got into ski gear like, <laughs> Really fast. Even yeah. today, that is, takes forever. Back then, those things were unwieldy. <laughs> so yeah, they were. They were all. That was a little un, unbelievable. Uh, here, uh, who hasn't said this about their own daughter? What she needs is a man to dominate her, to make love to her enough to make her love him. Come on now, <laughs> jeez, Ooh. man, I would. Yeah, use. he's already proven that he's uh, uh, a little old fashioned when it comes to the way to treat women. I guess so. Um, all right, say the name. I wouldn't tell Her Majesty Secret Service. All right, there's your title. Say it again. Her Majesty's Secret Service. Okay. I think he says it a bunch more times. And, and, I may be there's, a, and there's a great shot in, in MI6 of the queen on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah always looking at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, uh, she was like 19 in, in this picture, and it's such an iconic well, That's what I was going to ask. Was this her? I assume that was like a younger photo because she'd have been, yeah. I mean, in yeah. her 30s or 40s. 69. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, it was me. Is oh, this is a really intense scene uh, that I thought we should capture. Here you go. Tell Sassy, I wanted to know it was me. Wow, <laughs> wow. That's almost Wait, like I don't remember that. That's oh, almost that like it's good. from uh, more recent uh, production. It does. Something. There's something about that. Didn't feel like it was the same uh, score in yeah, the background there. Very right? weird. Yeah, a lot more sa- a lot of surround soundy kind of. You know. <laughs> uh, this guy sounds like a dweeb. Excuse me, sir. Commander Bond to see you. Hello, my fair fellow, sir. Commander. <laughs> uh, had a good journey. Have you had a good journey? No. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. No, I threw up a lot. <laughs> <in> that <laughs> gondola. I had the shits in the plane. Uh, when somebody, let's see. Oh, when somebody uh, goes out and needs to know what. And need you? I don't know what this is. I'll just play it. Like the hay fever, or the sickness caused by the oysters, or inability to eat meat. All right. I guess I don't know what I wrote there, but I was looking for. They a good didn't pun. have any of those things. Nope. They sure didn't. But also, oysters that make you sick are not an allergy. I mean, you could be well, allergic to oysters. Be. Yeah, but if you're and getting sick, selfish, sure. But if you're getting and sick from apply- an oyster, it's mostly because those things haven't been washed dry or cooked dry or yeah. something like that. This movie I mean, had a lot of things to say. Algeries, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Allergies. Yeah. This movie Algeries. had a lot. Of, they, they, Algeries. They kind of implied <laughs> that most of this was. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you saying? No, I, I, I can't. I don't know. I miss all of that. <laughs> Everybody just kept breaking up. No, like, no, okay, no. It's I'm it's, talking it's, to nobody's. Nobody hears me. No, okay. here's what I'm saying. The or then maybe this will inspire you to remember. Uh, you were we were saying the shell. Brian saying, yeah, there is shellfish allergies, which is true. I'm saying like, well, unless they're dirty, and then you said. They were trying to portray. Oh, they were trying. They were really going heavy against uh, uh, allergies being anything other than in your head. Oh, they oh, they yeah. kept they kept kind of uh, hinting at that. Yeah, which is see, kind see, of horse, totally not worth it. Sort of horse shit, right? <laughs> yeah, like, right. I've seen the I've seen people with real you know bee allergies or or whatever sure, right. peanut you're allergies. You're not going to hypnotize somebody out of that. That is a physical yeah. reaction, not a mental one. Yeah, you don't look you at them diabetes, and go diabetes. No problem. We'll talk it out of you. Yeah, they don't look yeah, at you and go, right. uh, uh, boy, "Who loves your baby?" And then suddenly you don't have it anymore. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Here Maybe is you get rid of your allergy to lollipops. That's, that's right. About it. Here's no. Let's see. No talk of cleaning. We will not discuss the affairs of the cleaning. Yeah, don't be doing that. <laughs> the cleaning. <laughs> the cleaning. I will murder your girlfriend later. Jeez, your wife. Who was that? Oh, I, yeah. You know, I loved and hated to see die. Aggr- aggressive blonde uh, sidekick. I hated to see him take it in the end. Oh, the guy who helped him out at the uh, yeah, construction the site, and then he followed. He yeah. came up with them to the the thing too. Oh, yeah. where they hung got, him out there? Got yeah. hit on the uh, yeah. right. Yeah, he'll climb up the mountain and everything. Then he got shot yeah. at. Jeez. He was he was James's Sherpa type, yeah. kind of. Yeah. 
Uh, did they really say this? Go balls. Girl balls? Did he really say gold, that? Gold, gold balls. balls. Gold balls? Go balls. Oh, go. The the, 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 they it. also implied that James Bond had four balls because she said, oh, it is true when he came in there into her room. No, she meant it's eight. true that the Scottish wear nothing under their kilts is that joke. Yeah. 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 Not, not that, that he has four gold balls. Refer- I thought they were still referring to the crest four balls, but okay. No. Man, the world is not enough. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> the world isn't enough then. And James the Bond too much. <laughs> James Bond is depicted as uh, having sex with a woman and then leaving and immediately having sex with a different woman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like yeah. with Every no downtime night. whatsoever. Yep. And that's just a physical feat. You're that's in the you're is. in the media of the chlamydia right there when you're jumping around <laughs> like that. <laughs> Here is the another horrible line. Just a slight stiffness coming on. Okay, buddy. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, here's a weird line. Who loves your baby? Oh, that wasn't in there. Sorry. I got that somewhere else. I think I got it from a commercial with... Uh, Who loves your baby? In uh, hey, Baby. Baby. Who loves your baby? <laughs> That's later. This is like 85. Who loves your baby? He was doing a commercial for like... Um, <laughs> doing a commercial for like... Um, uh, a travel agency or something. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. went to go find a version of Telly so, Savala saying that from Kojak, and they're all muffled and bad. They don't, mm, none of it ever sounded good. Yeah, it was a, it was a travel credit card, wasn't he, that he did? Yes. Oh, yeah. He's like, whether yeah. you're in Mazatlan or you're fishing off the coast of Hawaii or some bullshit. Yeah. Who loves you, baby? At the, or you're at the top of the yeah. Shitterhorn. Hey. That's right. Uh, here, <laughs> here's the one of the worst lines. Call me Hilly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, Why? That, Why would you say that? Well, the chicken lady needed a little something extra. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you when you hated chicken. Do you remember when you first came here? How you hated chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that is so dumb. What a dumb yeah. premise. Oh, you didn't get the rest of it, which is now you will love their flesh, their yeah. voice. Yeah. <laughs> their the look of them, whatever. Yeah. Who, the feel is it <laughs> cotton <laughs> um in the book it's because this thing keeps talking about the trivia always talks about how uh, this thing adhered to the book was there an allergy was that whole thing in the book or is that not did they make it uh, kind of um it was the the whole point though was that they were going uh they were going to go spread a bovine disease in england Okay. They were going to ruin the cattle and the wheat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just disrupt the, the economic flow of, uh, of beef products or whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It, uh, they could have not make made miss- it like, like hypnotism to cure some sort of mental block kind of thing, right? right? With the guys that obviously he's really just implanting them as sleeper agents, but... But it did, it, yeah, they didn't have enough to have to be uh, right. <laughs> did not have to be allergies. It really could have been something that could actually be cured with hypnosis. Yeah, right. Yeah. Some, in, something less the, dumb would be nice. That's what I would like. In thing. the book, yeah. all of the women are British, and they all have allergies to livestock, basically. Yeah. All right. Well, then, how come the one uh, Brian? I bet you brought it up earlier, but why was one of them eating yeah. nothing but tater tots and freaking chicken? Or uh, yeah, I fish think sticks? she must have had like a deep fried fat one was, uh, allergy, and like, one was eating bananas. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. plate of bananas. I Just a plate of bananas. Yeah. I assume yeah. it's possible to be allergic to any food stuff, but those felt rice? like really weird picks to me. Rice, yeah. yeah. Well, I have a friend who's allergic to rice. I didn't. I haven't looked up rice. I didn't. I was like, man, boy, being allergic to rice is like being allergic to. I don't know. Life? Yeah, life, air. yeah. Air. <laughs> I mean, it's like that weird water allergy where some people can't oh, get mm-hmm. sick when they're yeah. come in contact with water can barely drink to it. Heat yeah. And cold. Well, it's yeah. It's weird. Body response. Yeah. Body's weird, man. Body's like, hey, F this. This sucks. I'm going to fight you yeah. on this one. <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> uh, here's how you know he means business. I mean what I say, and I'll do what I claim. Well, I mean what I, I say, and say I'll that. do what I claim. I'll do what I claim. Say that. Yeah, I'll 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 do the things that I claim to do. I I won't. They're not just. But that's not oh, how the saying goes, though, right? Oh is no no no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is there a saying? <laughs> yeah, is there even a saying? I mean, what I, I, what I, say, I, I say I say what I I say what I mean or something like that. I do oh, I do what I do, what I do or I, I do what I say what I mean and I mean what I say is usually what they say. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. do yeah. as I do, not as I <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah, or do as I now claim, eat this chicken. not as I claim. I don't know. Right. Uh, long skier yell sound. Get ready. Here we go. This is a guy falling off the cliff. It's an amazing Wee. yell. 
I got the whole thing. Here you go. It's 13 seconds. And it keeps going. It gets a little louder. And then it keeps going. And then you hear the, the festival. Bon- oh, what a great die. What a death. I, I love the music. <laughs> yeah. I, I really thought she was going to punk us with the uh, the goofy the goofy thing. What? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that, right? That's, that's, it, it, that's right. it. Um, all right, say the name again. Your Majesty's Secret Service has stole my job. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, and I got a little. I think we got a. I was squeezed a little Italian accent out of him here, or not Italian, uh, Australian. Uh, I think I kind of heard it. Here it is. Destroy the institute and destroy Blofeld and his virus with it. With it. With it. With it. He's, he's, he's virus with it. Yeah. Ben meeting with it. <laughs> I mean, I know they're I know they're New Zealanders, but it has a little bit of that in it. Yeah. Just, can I hear it? Anyway, there you have it. Those are your clips. Now this. Right. Screw. Wrong one. <laughs> Screw. All right. Uh, let's get to the uh, the checklist. This is the film sack checklist, and uh, it's better than the average score of these old new ones. Wait, better than average score for these old ones. Check. I don't know what I wrote there. Shouldn't do these late at night. Uh, next up, we have the right. solution for being allergic to chicken. Does to eat more chicken? Check. <laughs> more chicken. Uh, and finally, they tell us that uh, what's it called? Uh, Chick Fil A. Eat more chicken. That's right. Yeah. A cow tell, told me that there, uh, or something Ooh. that looked very suspiciously like a cow. Yeah. Money is a penny, and a penny is money. Check. Wow. Uh, that's kind of an overall Bond take there. Uh, let's yeah. get to the Star Trek connection. I have to think somebody here has no. been in. No, you don't on. have to think that. This is <laughs> this is this is way too early, and this is all uh, British stuff. You know, it's just not. There's no connection. You could Star picture Trek Diana anyway. Rigg in green makeup making out with Kirk, though. You know, Ooh. you could. Yeah, you could imagine that. There's one person in this movie who could have later, and that's Diana Rigg. But no. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I, I mean, there's a. I I looked at. I was like, what about the stunt people? But even then, like you, you have to get these really None, tenuous connections. Yeah. Mm. None of those survived here anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, soundtrack. Uh, great. Oh, go ahead. By the way, among the stunt people, the main stunt person who like you see the most is a guy named Vic Armstrong. Yeah. And we have seen Vic Armstrong on film sex so many times. This guy apparently does stunts in weird, bad movies. Like, so many times. We've seen Vic Armstrong was in I Am Legend and Last Action Hero and Patriot Games and The Omen and Universal oh, Soldier. Heck, and he's still doing stunts that late. Is he like the lead yeah. guy now yeah. or something? Good wow. lord. He's in charge? Yeah, he's like the manager? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just stunts from an office basically yeah <laughs> just, yeah good <laughs> lord stunt coordinator doesn't have you to do the stunts up. but yeah that's cool um that is, is it cool. uh armstrong why is that familiar i don't know but I, because yeah. we've done it many times right vic armstrong is a great yeah. name oh i'm thinking of stretch i'm thinking of the stupid toy remember the toy <laughs> I was like, stretch you armstrong. Armstrong, also but, a stunt yeah. man yeah, yeah. <laughs> stretch armstrong <laughs> he was at my house filled with sand that you're never going to get out of the couch cushions yeah that goo the goo and sand that's in those yeah yeah Terror. do not open your stretch armstrong no. No. even even if you feel like you really want to um all right let's get to the uh oh i'd give it a soundtrack grade of a uh, pg for pretty good i really liked oh. it yeah it's john barry's yeah, masterwork yeah. um yeah. There's, I mean, he, you'll, you'll hear him again if you watch a lot of movies, obviously, but like, um, dances with wolves comes to mind, mm. but this is just, oh, it's so good. I it's did so not. Good. If you have not heard the propeller heads cover of the theme, go listen to it now. Yes. Ooh, I'm down with that. I already like them. Yeah. Uh, alternate titles. Oh, just hand it to me. This is crazy. Crazy. This was almost called Kojak and the magic avalanche maker. That didn't quite stick, though. So then they tried The Spy Who Loved Me, but only for one movie. <laughs> and then died. That's pretty much everybody, girl. <laughs> That's true. Uh, let's get to emails. We got a, got an email here. Oh, we didn't do the social post. How did I miss Twitter that? Post, yeah. yeah, we'll do those now. Let's uh, sum it up. 280 characters. That's all you get. Let's start with Randy. On Her Majesty's crew. A <laughs> revolving restaurant at the top of the world. An army of mind-controlled horny, horny girls. A lead looking great, but dude, weird voice much? 
a villain whose head you just want to reach out and touch, this would be the one about which I am most fond. But why you end so sad, James Bond? Oh, that's very nice. So yeah, I like that. Uh, well done, Brian Dunaway. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, more of a fighter than a lover. Hey, is that radioactive lint in your pocket, or are you just having a slight uh, stiffness coming on? <laughs> I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that line yeah. somewhere. I'm gonna piss my yeah. wife off tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Brian Ibbett, let's round it out with you. I swear that Dunaway and I did not yeah. talk about this beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> on Her Majesty's Secret Service, is that a binder clip rubber eraser and the metal from a ruler in your pocket, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> I mean, you guys were vibing. Love I it. like it. Yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. Well, now we swing hashtag over to... 69, dude. There you go. We swing over... Hashtag nice. We swing over to the emails now, and the emails go like this. First of all, I'm going to read this one. This is an actual email. Hello, Film Sack. I have five words for you, says Bernie Walter. Baby Driver is on Netflix. Oh, we know. Uh -huh. Yes. Says, I know about the elephant in the room, but he's not in the movie that much. Come on, people. Bernie, uh, we have no problem seeing movies with, with any shithead actor. Horrible, do, uh, horrible people. Yeah, yeah we don't yeah. care. Yeah. We've already done that. We'll do more. And and the only reason this hasn't been done, I th partly I think, is it's been hard to stream, but also... It, it has I just, been hard to stream, yeah. It yeah, was, I just uh, haven't seen it. So Only streaming for a very short time. So it is. I've added it to our list, and we will be watching Baby Driver. Yeah, baby. So, I'm excited. Like, I, would, I would rather see a literal uh, movie about that, I think. About a real yeah. baby driving. Yeah, a real baby driving. It's called Baby's Day Out, and we will baby's not day. be film sacking it. No. Driving. You love those movies, though, Dunaway, right? Where babies do stupid yeah. shit, like talk and drive and stuff. <laughs> Look, Who doesn't look like who's, that? Look who's baby driving now. <laughs> <laughs> why do you why do you like those? What are they just so ridiculous that they you just kind of can't help it they're or what? Just, they're, just, they're just stupid. I love them. Yeah. I respect that, dude. I do. Yeah. I wish I felt that way about talking babies and babies who are smart. <laughs> yeah, the or, baby's you know. going on an adventure. I mean, come on. And they say stupid baby stuff and they make baby dumb baby jokes. Yeah. That's okay though. I'm I, this is how I feel about d dogs that are way smarter. Like, you know, the um What's the basketball? The DA? Yeah, things like that, but not Lassie. not that one so much because he's switched out. But like Lassie to some extent. But even the more, what's the one that plays basketball? What's that dog? Airbud. Airbud. Oh, I kind of I'm a sucker for that. Or Beethoven. These are dumb yeah. movies. Like Beethoven's so good. Clinically stupid, but I I'll allow them in the way that you allow talking babies. Yes. Talking you know? babies. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Sure. So Dude, we, I, Alec, we're, Alec Baldwin as a talking baby is the best. Well, that yeah. animated is different. You can get away oh, with that. that is, yeah, and yeah, Baby Boss is is the best of the of the litter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which isn't saying much. Uh, all right, let's get to the uh, where was I? Oh, Bernie, thanks uh, for your email. If you want to email us, filmsack at gmail dot com. You can also keep texting us at eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. Keep doing it. Uh, you can also voicemail us there as well. Uh, I'd like to mention a couple of patrons. We got brand new folks this week. Jason Arif and Joe McNally uh, have joined our Patreon at patreon.com slash film sack. You'll get no commercials. You'll get pre-show content every week. We did one today. It was all about conspiracy theorists. You'll enjoy it. No. Yes, you will. We did talk a little bit about the conspiracy theories, but not most of it. Most of it was. Are you kidding me? That's almost all it was. We talked about 20 we minutes about t-shirts. T-shirts. Oh. <laughs> well, the whole thing was about yeah, that's true. Maybe both. half and half. You get a little both. of both. You get both. Or both, depending on how you say it. Both. <laughs> uh, anyway, monthly sp uh, host episodes, you get those as well. I just put one up. I don't know who's up. I think it's Ibit. Up. Eee, Sweet. It's my, it's my month. Yeah. I liked your hint the other day. I won't say what it was, but I kind of like where your head's at if that's where you're going with it. I don't know if you remember saying uh, I'll it. I need you to remind me what the hint was because uh, I, I feel it, stumped. It was, it's, <laughs> it's all the, the TMS Vegas prep that's got my mind fra uh, yeah, fraggled. I barely remember anything right now, but the it was. Uh, I'll tell you offline because I don't want to yeah, blow yeah, it, yeah. but it seemed like a yeah. great idea. Anyway, all of that plus an art print in the mail. Good Lord. You, uh, many of you are just now getting the um, uh, Anton Sugar print that I did. I'm very oh, happy with yeah. it. So watch for that. Uh, other cool benefits. Sign up today. Patreon.com slash film sack. Our next movie is the 2014 Godzilla movie that started the current uh, in-universe Godzilla thing. That's yeah. Kong yeah. deal. And that's you going can on. go see the G versus the K now, right? Yep. Uh, GXK. Forbidden yep. Kingdom of... 
Power. Oh, sorry. Do I have this wrong? Skull Island started this. Skull or- Island was the first one. The one with the uh, the one with eighteen people from the MCU was the first one. That's yeah. right. And and John Goodman. <laughs> eighteen MCU and people Goodman. and John Goodman. Right. We'll get to him. We'll get to John Goodman in the MCU. You think so? Is he coming? Is he doing a thing that Someday, I don't? Someday, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing confirmed. I don't, I don't know if he's nothing confirmed, but I I can see them throwing. Oh him hell yeah, dude. He'd be great. Who could he be? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's older he now, be, so he could be like a uh, wizard. Yeah, you need like a. Um, well, we've already had our Obadiah Stain. Um, oh, that's a great pick, though. He'd be some. He'd be something like that. Yeah, where yeah. he's pulling the strings behind the scenes. Yeah, less less super powery, more um, mobstery, control mm-hmm. type yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, like if we didn't already have a kingpin. You know, John Goodman could almost be Kingpin. Oh, right? yeah. That wouldn't be uh, bad. Wouldn't be bad. Oh, you know, he'd be good, the Tinker. Bring him in as the, uh, oh, the Spider Man villain, good. the Tinker. All yeah. right. Yeah. I'm in. I'm all it's, in. It's like, it, this is going to be tinkler. a really. <laughs> Our next episode is going to confuse somebody. Just want to say over and over Godzilla 2014. <laughs> yep. This, yeah. is, this is the one that has Brian Cranston and Juliet Binoche in it, and Billy right. Bobby Brown. B- Millie, she, nope. Millie, I don't Millie think she's Bobby. in no. this one yet. Oh, she nope. comes nope. in the next one. Okay, I got that wrong. Oh, oh, so sorry, sorry. Yeah. So this with, uh, Ken Watanabe. Oh, I love him. Sign me up. Yeah. I guess so, I'm already signed up because I'm going to watch it. This is great. Is Where there is this a Godzilla in your movie? Where... <laughs> look, for, look for Godzilla 2014, starring uh, David Strathairn. Just uh, Gareth Edwards directed. This the one? Correct. Yes. Correct. Right. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. He's great. Okay. Well, I'm in. Let's uh let's do it. It's oh, where's it streaming? Sorry. Where did we say? It's on Netflix, Netflix. and Max right Net- now. So Netflix. we have we have All a right. lot of chances. All right. You notice cool. this happens. It's like uh hey, Dune's a big deal. Let's put 84 Dune, part one Dune, and uh Joe Dorowski's Dune documentary and every other mm. Dune thing mm-hmm. we can find all up at one time. Yeah, it's I'm, smart. People are looking for that stuff right now, so it's a, a very smart thing to do. I would think so. I like. Uh, I'm really um, glad they According did. to this, actually, Godzilla is the first one of the MonsterVerse. Skull Island was 2017. This was 2014. Oh, I have them backwards then. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I hmm. I actually thought that was the Skull Island was the first one too. So yeah. hmm. great. We can go through the MonsterVerse uh, like we go through the Bondiverse. That's right. And then. Bondiverse sounds like a glue. Uh, it does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the glue continuum. I don't know. Visiting all of the Australian beaches one by one. <laughs> oh, anyway, while I, yeah. While I have you here, and it's on my mind, speaking of Gareth Edwards movies starring Ken Watanabe, yeah. did anybody watch The Creator? No, but I want to. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah, I, I it. liked it. That yeah. That's sackable, honestly. There's a yeah. lot to question in that film, but I think it's... God, visually, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I've heard nothing mm-hmm. but things of that it would sound like a thing I would like, and I just have not gotten yeah. around to it. Netflix, right? It's, it's on Hulu I've... for me. Oh, Hulu. I thought it was a permanent Netflix deal. Just on Randy's Hulu, though. Oh, yeah. just Randy's Hulu. All right. Well, the RH, we call it. <laughs> uh, well, I say Hulu yeah. for me because I don't understand the distinction now between them and Disney. I just, oh, like, it doesn't yeah. make sense to me. My, in my mind, I'm like... What is what is happening here? Where, where where is something streaming? Like I know for sure if it's Star Wars, I go to Disney. But yeah, for yeah, everything right, right. else, I'm confused. It's like Star Wars yeah. and Marvel, even, Disney. You're good. Even some of the Marvel stuff, it's like, all right, yeah, the, the course the Disney Marvel stuff, yes, but only some of the non Disney Marvel stuff is on Disney. And there you've got to go to like Hulu or Peacock or Paramount. To see yeah, some of that. you would think you could get like, for example, just the name Disney would make you think, oh, the Beyond the Star, or all the Spider Verse stuff would be there. Nope. Right. Nope. <laughs> everywhere else but there. So, yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you for uh, being our supporters, is the main thing. Oh, and then you Godzilla. Yeah, we're doing that next week. 2014's Godzilla. <laughs> Check it out. Got a big old lizard in it. It's fantastic. Actually, I really like that movie. I'm, I'm excited to go back to it. Yeah. yeah. Filmsack.com is our website. And if you haven't heard of it before, now's the time to write it down. You can also uh, go and uh, get, leave us reviews on sites that you know let you do that like apple podcasts and whatever the hell google's up to they always cancel their shit but who knows <laughs> whatever they're doing oh i guess it's all youtube music now and that's fine it's a good service uh but wherever it is you can leave reviews and you can tell us how much you love us and all of that stuff uh for you youtube heads uh just a little note um some of you are like man i sure wish this show was on youtube so because that's where i listen to everything well good news it is um it's not us and our faces but there is a version of the audio show that goes up on youtube mm. when we're done 
And uh, those who are watching that right now, thanks for grabbing it however you want. If you want that, it's there as well. Uh, and I think that rolls right into YouTube podcasts. I'm not sure how that shit works over there, but I'm sure Google will cancel it. We won't. It won't matter. Um, they've been canceling a lot of things lately. Anyway, let's move on uh, to getting out of here. Thank you all for listening. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Brian, for Brian, and for Randy. Just a slight stiffness. Well, ooh, we'll see you next time. That's the wrong one. Get more at frogpants.com. Oh, I'm all over the place. There you go. Ooh, <laughs> smack a little bit. Come down, woman. Uh, there were some great couple of moments of like, uh, 